The FNAF Ruin development team as of very recently gave away huge details about their game that tells us more than first meets the eye. This new glitch involvement, gameplay implications, animatronics, and more. Game Jolt's super recent reveal for what to expect in Rune is the form of a statement, and from what I've seen, it's the most important detail revealed so far. Additionally, given the dilapidated state of the Pizzaplex, it's claustrophobic. There isn't a bunch of massive, well-lit areas where you can see and avoid a threat in the distance. But what exactly does this tell us? But it actually gives us a huge linkage between the plot of Ruin and the most important minigame in all of Security Breach known as Princess Quest. We've got to establish a strong connection here to use it to figure out certain aspects of Ruin. Obviously, there's a huge name connection here. Cassie, our Ruin protagonist, sounding a lot like our princess's name, Cassidy, which is shown in the files. But there's also aspects not even Game Theory's MatPat has brought up. Going back to our statement, the description definitely shows our contrast to the original Security Breach animatronics who spring into attack even from far away distances, giving you more than enough time to run but it also connects to the exact nature of Princess Quest in the first place. A lot of the rooms are almost completely dark until you go around lighting up areas yourself. And because of our limited viewpoint, monsters are able to simply pop out from the shadows and end up right in front of us rather than being something we can detect from far away. It's the exact premise of how Ruin's gameplay is literally described to us. Dark, poorly lit areas in which we aren't able to avoid threats until they're closer to us. Sure, there are occasional areas with more lighting in Princess Quest, but the same can be said in Ruin 2. We now are going off this early released gameplay screenshot how the entire in-game lobby area contradicts the idea of a poorly lit area with all the sunlight pouring through, but again, this is just an exception. But the big detail connecting what we should expect in Ruin to our minigame Princess Quest is the fact we pick up seemingly an identical mask in Princess Quest to the one Cassie picks up in the trailer. The same mask in Princess Quest is what helps us physically ward off the big bad in the form of our evil virus here. It's essentially one of the objects we use to free Vanessa from its control, which is why it leads to this cutaway ending of her without a mask on, because we've successfully used the mask to save her. Now notice how the Ruin trailer depicts Cassie putting on basically the same mask right before it cuts to the big bad, tying a connection between using this thing and defeating it just like Princess Quest. So with so many connections between the two, surely Princess Quest is meant to tell us something about what to expect in our Ruin timeline to build a stronger connection between it all. Well, that's a given and I can prove it. The most obvious one of all being, for starters, the interpretation of our villain we defeat with the use of our rabbit mask in the first place. The exact sequence of events in Princess Quest as the portrayal of this thing basically matches up perfectly with Ruin. The Glitchtrap virus being mixed up in a wiry exterior, just like the same portrayal of the Glitchtrap virus here, which we know is involved, shown by the same green and purple hue, which is also mixed with the blob, same wiry exterior. At least, it appears this way. Which is why we essentially get a cutscene in which the virus mixes with the blob at the end of the burn trap ending, rather than just showing him being killed off. I believe there's much more going on in this sequence than we previously believed. Also, they both have have tear tracks coming down and wild smiles. Okay, but again, just going off our villain, there must be more information out there that we could use to connect to different aspects of our new DLC through Princess Quest. And we do exactly that with the tool Cass uses in the trailer, which we know can't be as simple as just a save mechanic. We know because of the implications of this thing that it's gotta have some grand importance in some way. We need to know what it does. But a lot of people out there suggest due to our save stations being a mechanic in the original security breach, we'd have an updated version of that in the form of what Cassie interacts with in Ruin. But no, to debunk this, we can see in this early released gameplay shot how our very same panel we use our tool to plug into is posted up right next to the door of the gift shop and how in the trailer we physically see Cassie in that same gift shop, meaning it only makes sense that the original purpose is to help us open doors. At least, that's part of it. Hence the tool outline clearly printed on the side of this device. In the physical trailer, we see another shot of the station posted up, guess where? Right next to another door. Also in terms of a save mechanic, I don't know about you, but this loading circle bar thingy looks kind of familiar to something auto-saving your progress before an important scene takes place. But again, that's more speculation. But our connection with this tool to Princess Quest is our best part here. Because while we're looking for similarities between the two, Princess Quest starts our main character's journey off with nothing but a light source before she's given a weapon in the second section. 
because the game is split into three. It's something she uses midway into her journey to fend off all the glitches minions. And again, assuming Princess Quest is feeding into our ruined story, this tells us Cassie is also given a weapon <coughs> that we see her pick up while in the pizza plex telling it's something she picks up along the way. Kinda like the princess. And assuming the princess uses this weapon to defeat the minions of the glitch, we can use our weapon to defeat the Glamrock animatronics by hacking into them, feeding the digital virus part of them with this digital tool, because I don't know what else you're meant to do with this thing. Again, these are basically the ruined version of the glitch's minions, shown by the eye holes in Roxy matching the gadget and probably some sort of equivalent in the other Glamrocks were meant to save them or destroy them, one or the other. Which brings us to one of our most important minions of all. You can see the mix between sun and moon pops up as a piece of our equation too. Pointed out by a user on Reddit, the Balloon World arcade machine in which sun and moon make an appearance was one of the two games meant to be associated with Princess Quest in the files before it was changed, or something similar development wise. So seeing as there's a connection to Princess Quest and Ruin, there must be something here to back that up. And wouldn't you know it, a glitch in the digital system actually causes a sort of merge between the two, Sun and Moon, that people in the fandom like to call Eclipse. Where have we seen something like this before? Hmm, the merge between Sun and Moon in the game being caused by the glitch due to all the purple crap on the screen and the reports in our security breach messages that depict a spreading glitch within the arcade systems point us in the direction that this same glitch is why my boy Spaceman ends up like this in Ruin. His backstory in a sense. But wait, what about the other arcade machine I mentioned? The one connected to Princess Quest that's supposed to help us in our big reveal with the Ruin animatronics. Well, in terms of what we see in Princess Quest, I think what sticks out the most here is what we see in the conveyor belt portion of the level, which is Chica peeping through the little peephole here. But it's not like we see anything that makes sense in Ruin with chica on a conveyor belt i this has to mean something oh yeah and that other important arcade game i was talking about that was meant to have a connection to princess quest yeah it was chica's freeding frenzy the only problem being the chica here is portrayed as being yellow so it's different right well in rockstar row there's actually a damaged replica of chica's torso despite the current model also existing Maybe the newly painted white replica we all know and love replaced an older yellow one, explaining why the carriages in the game don't match this animatronic's main colors. We have a carriage for the matching colors of Mati's purple, yellow, green, Freddy's red and blue, Roxy's green, red, purple, and Chica's pink and yellow. So there's a chance there's an earlier model equipped with the yellow design existing in the pizza plex beforehand, or it was just the same model repainted, but that's just something we're gonna have to speculate about. But here's where we get to the most important piece of the puzzle so far, because there's also an involvement in Ruin between huge animatronics that tie together other aspects of our story you're gonna wanna know about. If you're curious for our early details about what to expect in this upcoming DLC, click this next video.